chapter 26, Reckoning and Dismissal, of the book God dictated to me, as he dictated the Torah to Moses, which is a, 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 a belief of the Orthodox Jews of Judaism. What they don't know is he also dictated all the books of the prophets, commanded and directed each individual prophet write this down. With me, it was, Keith, go to your computer, type this. Or go to the Jewish virtual library, read everything they have on Holy Spirit. And while I'm doing that, he would point my head, my eyes at certain paragraphs and say, copy that. He didn't say copy, you know, paragraph four, five, and six. <laughs> he just point my eyes at it. Not just my head, my eyes. And, uh, you know, paste that in your notepad and, We'll put it together as a blog in WordPress later on. I had 117 blogs, and uh, we whittled them down to 50 chapters. Reckoning and Dismissal, Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 10. Thus said the Lord God, I'm going to deal with the shepherds. It's the rabbis. I will demand a reckoning of them for my flock. That's the Jewish people. And I will dismiss them from tending the flock. Now, if you don't know about discerning antiquity from the modern day, this is where you, because I never hear any rabbis talk about this, then I will appoint a single shepherd over then to tend them, my servant David, Moshe, my servant David, he shall tend them, he shall be a shepherd to them, a teacher. And where do I teach? God's new book, full of information. No rabbi today or in the history of Judaism, no sage, no theology of the Hebrew Bible has ever known this information that I'm teaching. And I was an atheist for 50 years, and I'm a Gentile. Matter of fact, 53 describes a Gentile. Can't be Jesus, he's a Jew. Can't be all of the people of Israel gathered as one man. They're all Jews. God comes from Adam, Gentile lands, lands of Christianity. And with him, none of the Jewish people, they're, and with him, none of the people were with him. What? It's not right. Anyway, no Jewish people are with him. But he's got to have a representation because God covers the earth. So does the angel of his presence. But you don't know where he's at if he doesn't have a man like Moses. That's where his presence is. His presence is his mind. Apparently, he's a lot more than just his mind, but it's, it's his presence, his mind, along with the angel of his presence, together forming the Shekinah that enters the temple. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm the teacher. I'm appointed. They're all dismissed. But the practicalities of the modern day is there's too many synagogues. Too, too many uh, of the Jewish people who attend synagogue for all the rabbis of the earth to be told they can no longer uh, tend them. Okay? It's not possible. Now, it could be believed in antiquity. They're illiterate, sometimes savage people, uh, but uh, and with no concept of, of how many people they actually were. But we do today. No, you dismiss before God. You're not in right standing with him, rabbis, for false teachings. Judaism needs to get cleaned up. This is his day of the Lord, and, this, and he, knew, he knew what would be going on. Too much teaching man's word, and rambams, and false teachings, messianic errors, world of exaltation, the world speaking Hebrew, Moshe, having all of Israel, Walking in the Torah and perfecting the world? Are you kidding me? 
<laughs> well, I'm handling it. I'll tell you flat out, that's not happening. <laughs> it does say Moshe. He doesn't say, Ram Dan doesn't say God. But that came from Ram Dan. And they teach it. So I should be a shepherd to them, teaching to them. The righteous, the many made righteous, the witnesses of the first six verses, in quotes, they're all the same people, one through six. I was one of them. Now I got selected for this. Anyway, that's, go, <laughs> come to chapter uh, 21 or 22, you'll find all you need to know about that. And my servant David should be a ruler among them. It's not a king. There's no kingdom coming. God knew Israel was going to be a democratic state. That came from Ramban too. He's got two chapters in the Mishnah Torah. The laws of King Moshe. And there's not one word of it in the Hebrew Bible. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will grant them a covenant of friendship which directly refutes a messianic here. This is where you're teaching something. It's not this you're teaching man's word. You're conflicting with God's word. My servant David should be king over them, be one shepherd for all of them. He's also going to call him a prince. Just means leader, all of it. They shall follow my rules and faithfully obey my laws. Thus, they shall remain in the land which I gave to my servant Jacob and in which your fathers dwelt. They and their children and their children's children shall dwell there forever with my servant David as their prince for all time. That's Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 24 and 25. These verses were written with reference to God's servant David of a time in the lands of Abraham's that kingdoms existed. Even using the names king and prince today would only be relevant to those who practice Judaism faithfully, following God's laws, and remaining in the land and dwelling there forever. This is the thought. The Jewish people who practice Judaism and heed, fear, and revere God. Meaning they don't listen to the teachings of man's word. And if they do, it's going to be one of my duties, my task, and I have many. To get them to stop that and to recognize God's word over the words of rabbis. This is not an anointment to be king over the lands of Abraham and its people, and God's servant David will come in a time that Israel is a democratic state. Those were my words of the same information. This is how God puts it. He says he needs to clean. <laughs> he needs to make, make sure it's clear. In today's world, with so many synagogues and people of Israel, the best interpretation is that David will be a leader of God's flock to tend them and be a ruler among them. David is not a king or prince of Israel, and there is no mention of the kingdom as commonly believed from the teachings of the sages and the rabbis of the ancient age and middle ages and still today. When the anointed one comes, the Lord says he will de deal with and demand a reckoning from the rabbis and dis dismiss them from tending the flock. These are God's words. I was commanded and directed to write this, to type this up, write this down. Then he will appoint a single shepherd over them to tend them, his servant David, Moshe. He shall tend them. He shall be a shepherd to them. The Lord will be their God, and his servant David shall be a ruler among them. God does not appear to be pleased with the teachings of the rabbis in this day of the Lord, and their reliance on the opinions and commentaries of the sages and rabbis from antiquity and the Middle Ages. 
who often disagree with one another. There are many inconsistencies and errors in what the sages and rabbis uh, said back then and what the scripture says. On many occasions, the sages and rabbis, and most notably Rambam, have taken from and added to the scripture of God. Toby Singer has been doing that with his analysis of Isaiah 53. He, thinks he has a mistranslation of the Hebrew to English in Isaiah 53.10 and comes up with the words guilt offering. No, the man offered himself for guilt. And basically it's to remove guilt by becoming the righteous servant and making the many who are not following God's laws righteous. Bring them back to Judaism. Bring them back to synagogue. Bring them back to the Hebrew Bible. Rambam God says the anointed one is a shepherd, a king, and prince of the flock to rule among them. Not of the promised lands and all his people and perfecting the world. Rambam removes God's word and replaces it with Rambam's word. That the anointed one is the king of the lands and people and will have a kingdom. And they're still taught today by the rabbis. The commandment by God that nothing is to be taken from or added to his teachings and laws of the Torah applies to the entirety of the Hebrew Bible. As I explained at the beginning of this video, it's all his. All of it is to be respected all of which was written at his direction and command, and all of which is which, which is God's word. The entire teaching of the era of redemption, restoration, and exaltation strays so far from the natural order of the world and the ways of God and his words written by his prophets that it angers him. Y'all know God can get angry, right? Doesn't seem like it. The prophets were rarely listened to, and God spoke directly to them, telling them what to write. That is one reason he will have a reckoning with them and dismiss them. The sages and rabbis are men who have often had their own personalities and agendas incorporated into their opinions and interpretations of the scripture. That's true today, too. They often had and have a, have a certain lifestyle. They like to maintain and seek renown and fame and riches. That affects the cost of their services, the price of their writing, and what they choose to teach to the flock. Interpreting and teaching that in the day of the Lord, King Moshiach will perfect the world to speak Hebrew, Perfect the world, I think that means world peace. To speak Hebrew and practice Judaism, and the entire world will exalt the Jewish people as being right about God all along, is what the flock wants to hear and brings donations to the shepherds, interpreting and teaching what God actually says will not bring in many donations for the reason that the flock will want to know why God is going to have a reckoning with them and dismiss them. They will want to know what the sages and rabbis have done to anger God. God is not creating a new world of all men loving and exalting and holding in high esteem the Jewish people and practicing Judaism Though he is creating a new heaven for only the Jewish people, with the name Israel shall endure. God has never. Do you want me to get the TV turned down? Well, you might hear some background noise. God has never changed the will of men or how they think of him and the Jewish people in his power. Any exaltation the Jewish people receive from the world will come to the efforts of God's righteous servant. That's me. 
It's directed and commanded by God as he did with Moses, primarily the building of the third temple, where the world will know that God, um, that the Jewish people are God's chosen, something like that. Two billion or so Christians are not going to wake up one day and in one account denounce Jesus as a false God and convert to Judaism. This is true for the Muslim also. No man is going to convince the followers of Islam that he, me, and I am. I'm the last prophet of God. And that it is not Muhammad as etched in stone on their mosque. Two billion Muslims or so are not going to wake up on the same day as the Christians and denounce Allah as they know him and convert to Judaism. Hezbollah, Hamas, the leaders of Iran, and other terrorist, terrorist groups would more likely announce a jihad against God's righteous servant. That's me. That's where they, if you see him, kill him. That's a jihad against the person who is, um, I guess, denounced Muhammad as the final prophet. then they would acknowledge that the Jewish people had been right about God all along. The world, real world is not the confines of a synagogue, yeshiva, or religious library. Rabbis need to step out and consider their beliefs in a world of education, science, and technology that did not exist in the days of the Bible, the days of the sages, and through the Middle Ages. God's words had to be understood by an illiterate, uncivilized people from the teachings of intelligent men in a world where meat was eaten uncooked and babies were sacrificed to gods in the biblical days. His book was written for different eras and people, the people of the ancient age and the Middle Ages and the people of the age of enlightenment and reasoning through the age of information. God's reckoning with the rabbis today and their dismissal from tending the flock cannot happen in the real world today. There are far too many synagogues and Jewish people practicing Judaism, the flock. It was something that could be believed in the ancient age and middle ages. The rabbis today base their interpretations of the scripture on a world that no longer exists. A world of the sages and rabbis in the ancient age and the Middle Ages and not the world today. They did not teach of the reckoning God will have of them and their dismissal that leaves no room for special circumstances. The belief that David will have all of Israel practicing Judaism and perfecting the world, bringing world peace with everyone speaking Hebrew will not happen. From God himself. That's, that's his statement. If God was going to make that happen in his power, he would have written it that way. He would have said or implied that specifically in his power, the world would be changed as something new for the Jewish people. God says in Malachi 3 that many will heed and revere him and be written into the scroll of remembrance, and many will not. Remember in the covenant, it says, I'm going to forgive your sins and inequities, and that will write Torah on your heart, and everyone will heed me. God says, that's what you expect. That's how I would write it, if I was forgiving everybody's sins. But the truth is, I knew that. I, I knew when I gave the first covenant to the Jewish people, they weren't all going to follow my commands and laws and directions. That's why he set up Yom Kippur. He, yeah, okay. The covenant which says that his forgiveness of sin will cause the Torah to be written on every heart and all will heed him. The scripture, the scripture of God is written by his prophets at his command and direction with multiple purposes as well as for prophecy 
it must be interpreted with the world of the prophet. The world of the sages and rabbis and the world of the day of the Lord in mind. The days of this prophet, the righteous servant. God speaks to you, you're a prophet. Doesn't mean seeing the future, prophesizing. All rabbis are dismissed. When the anointed one whom God calls David arrives, that would be me. Not from their synagogues and constituents, is that is not possible. God knew that would be the case when he had it written by Ezekiel. They are dismissed in the eyes of God. The rabbis will not be in right standing with God, even though they are sin free by the covenant or observant in Judaism. They join those in Malachi 3 who do not heed and fear him. I can hear them squawking about that one. But it's the false teachings. It's adding to the Torah and taking from. Particularly the false teachings and not listening to me. Oh, all in common, I'm shunned, uh, despised, shunned, and held of no account. Considered afflicted by God, plagued and smitten. If you read the comments I've been getting on these videos with over 140,000 views. Now that's all 50 videos together. Some get a lot of views. We just had one, the greatest, uh, I think it was John the Baptist and the greatest lie Jesus ever told. 363 views in uh, basically a day. I think a lot of them were Christian. I'm surprised they really watch it. They jo okay, and they are not in right standing with God and will not be entered into the scroll of remembrance. And if you're not going into the scroll of remembrance, you don't go to the Jewish heaven, a special heaven, for those who heed his prophet and obey God, and we make this day of the Lord something to be remembered. Malachi 3, verses 16 through 23. In this vein have those who revered the Lord been talking to one another. The Lord has heard and noted it, and a scroll of remembrance has been written at his behest concerning those who revere the Lord and esteem his name. And on the day that I am preparing, that's this day, the day of the Lord, said the Lord of hosts, they shall be my treasured possessions. I will be tender toward them and I'm as a man is tender toward the son who ministers to him. And ye shall come to see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between him who has served the Lord and him who has not served the Lord. For lo, the day is at hand, burning like an oven. All the arrogant, and all the doers of evil shall be strong. And the day that is coming, said the Lord of hosts, shall burn them to ashes and leave them neither stock nor bowels. But for you to revere my name, a son of victory shall rise to bring healing. You shall go forward. you got a lot of explaining to do with this, this part. i got a lot of teaching, I should say. Which I will... And all submission except. But for you, that's me talking to the Lord. It, it, it tends to conflict with something he's had me do before. I mean, we'll get it straight. Books aren't published yet. But for you who revere my name, a son of victory shall rise to bring healing. You shall go forth and stamp like stall-fed calves, and you shall trample the wicked to a pulp. For they shall be dust beneath your feet on the day that I am preparing, said the Lord of hosts. <coughs> God has always accepted the repentance and being forgiving if the repentance is heartfelt. The wrong is not repeated and restitution is made to the person or entity wrong. 
For the rabbis' repentance is telling their flocks of the false teachings that have evolved from the ancient times that are continued today. God's got a top, a top ten of false teachings and fallacies by the rabbis in taught by the rabbis in Judaism today. It's in this book. Top ten. God says there's more. It's just the top ten. For the rabbi's repentance is telling the flocks of the false teachings that have evolved from the ancient times that continue to the day. Restitution is teaching the words of the God of Israel of the day of the Lord, particularly the belief that Isaiah 53 describes Israel. All of the Jewish people gathered as one man at one time. And it's only happened two times. At Oreb, with the Israelites, when they received God's first covenant. And according to the book of Ezra, they all gathered as one man, the 13 tribes that returned. Anybody who teaches there are 10 lost tribes has not been able to properly read Ezra and understand it. And I'm quite sure Toby the Singer is one of them. I've seen a video to that effect. Okay, I actually got, I didn't think I was going to get done with that. I was reading pretty fast. Next chapter 27. Oh, and this is hilarious. Avenge the Revenge. That's from Rashi. <laughs> hey, you need to watch this video. That's a good one. Thank you for watching. Tell all your friends about this. Tell your rabbis. You're hearing they've been dismissed, and it sounds very, very real, and it's in the Hebrew Bible. And ask them how God sees. And ask them how he talks to a man. Don't tell him if you've already learned it. And don't forget to tell Moshe, I said.